We're on the developments in Zimbabwe, I'm now joined in studio by political analyst Dr. William Mbofu from Wits University. Dr. Mbofu, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you. Now, these upcoming elections in Zimbabwe will be a huge test for President Nangangwa's sentiments on moving the country forward. I think we heard him say that a lot when he came into office. Can we expect a free and fair election? Uh, a free and fair election uh, in the present circumstances and uh, political climate in Zimbabwe is not uh, feasible uh, because uh, you can see uh, the speedy way in which uh, elections are being driven towards is part of the progression of the coup to manipulate time take advantage of circumstances before the political opposition is ready and uh, you can tell that in charge in incumbency is a political junta pretending to be a civilian government and I think that's an important point to touch on when you say it seems like they're moving too fast in terms of setting a time and, and date for these elections and going ahead with it. Um, what are the sentiments of the global community and SADC specifically actually where they are seemingly you know, in support of um, Nangangwa, um, it seems like the sentiments are the country is moving forward. But you have the other side which says actually we're not in a position to be hosting elections at this point in time. A lot still needs to be done. Uh, I think the African and the world community should urgently work out of this nightmare where you have uh, a veneer progress, a veneer of uh, democracy, a, a semblance or an illusion of good things happening when under uh, the surface uh, atrocities violence and certain fundamental crimes against humanity are taking place kukura only happened in such a way where the world is sold a certain picture of progress and development taking place when under that surface people are being murdered and as i speak the truth in zimbabwe is being murdered it's not being told it's being concealed and that's a crime against humanity i'm actually glad that you mentioned the massacres because we saw um parts of what the president was saying at at the at davos last week at the world economic forum summit where it seems like he's not prepared to own up to what's really taking place in the country and it seems the outside world is either also in denial or we actually don't know what's going on there and it seems like it's a it's a new dawn but it actually isn't yeah, actually what he said at Davos was actually part of the progression of the coup that I'm talking about. You can tell that he speaks from a primitive corner, an ancient corner that is not in touch with the modern world where um, human rights, justice and um, democracy itself are the foundations of um, change uh, and progressive uh, human experiences. He speaks from the 1920s and the 1930s, where you can say Zimbabwe is open for business, but you're closing up on such fundamental issues as uh, justice after such a genocide, after such atrocities and uh, violations of, of, of human beings in Zimbabwe. I think before we move on to maybe the opposition, let's look at sentiments on the ground in Zimbabwe, the sentiments of Zimbabweans themselves. Because initially there was a lot of excitement. We remember what happened um, when Mugabe resigned. It was, it was a lot of excitement and celebration. But a lot of analysts did say, you know, this is going to be very temporary and it's going to die down and then reality will set in. Is that where the people of Zimbabwe are at this point in time? Definitely. I think uh, the massive euphoria about the departure of uh, Robert Mugabe, the long-term tyrant and uh, dictator, blinded most uh, people in Zimbabwe, in Africa and in the world to the monstrosity of the military junta that has eventually taken over, which is a junta that was actually Mugabe's instrument in executing the genocide, uh, the atrocities, the massacres and other human rights violations that took place in that part of the world. Let's now delve into the actual elections and look at the opposition MDC. We know that Morgan Fangara hasn't been well. Um, is he well enough to even lead the party at this point in time? And what kind of challenge is the opposition really going to be for ZANU-PF in these elections? Uh, the challenges are massive uh, and the challenges are deeply uh, disabling 
in that, as I said, the present junta is trying to manipulate time, to manipulate resources, to manipulate its uh, illegitimate incumbency to disable the opposition. Because um, elections are not rigged only by the shuffling manipulation of the votes, but also by the rigging of the political climate and the historical conditions. Um, there is no progressive change that can take place anywhere in the world based on uh, falsehoods. You cannot have political change, democratic elections, and justiciable uh, political change where mass graves are being concealed, where victims are being silenced, where atrocities are being perfumed as the dead past instead of being discussed openly. Only open, frank talk can be the foundation of progressive political change. Otherwise, this coup is just what it is, a coup, and this government is just what it is, a military junta in charge. Then masquerading is a progressive um, force. And you mentioned that part of this facade is to cripple uh, the opposition. Now, we saw earlier on when Mons Fangarai wasn't feeling well, President Nakagwa did go and see him, you know, and there was someone was saying, you know, this, this shows um, a good character on his part. Do you think it's part of that facade? Uh, or was it just a good gesture? <coughs> what most people forget is that the, the devil himself, Lucifer, was a very handsome man, a well-behaved guy and a cautious guy. Mm. A, a lot of harm is done by a poison that is sweet rather than that which is openly bitter. So be careful when the devil smiles. Let's look at other people in this game. We know in Zim specifically, but also all around the world, elections are usually uh, revolved around personalities. In this instance, I mean, there's Nelson Chin uh, Chinamasa, who's also there. Um, we can't exclude him in this mix. Your take on him, and can he lead the opposition? Um, any progressive, right-thinking, ethical, and honest Zimbabwean is capable of leading the opposition. Uh, what we should focus on are the conditions, the political climate, the historical conditions, as shaped by this present junta, uh, conducive for a democratic election. And the answer is no. And the tragedy and the betrayal by SADC, by AU, by UN, is that everyone, just like it happened during Kukra, pretends that everything is normal in Zimbabwe. But a coup has taken place, military junta is in charge, but people want to look aside and pretend that something is good is happening. When is the world going to see catastrophe before it takes place? And I think a good way to wrap up would be to look at a way forward. The elections are going to happen, you know, as it stands. With this announcement, the elections are going to happen. What can we expect? What can we hope for? What needs to be done? Um, I think the world should put its act together and ensure that um, the coming election in Zimbabwe is monitored, is observed, and whatever violations take place are used to make a final judgment on whether the elections were free and fair, and that at last the world should stand up for ethics, for truth, and for justice. That's and not to be taken up by this euphoria about Nguena, uh, about this change that is actually a facet. Dr. Mbofu, unfortunately, we've run out of time. Thank you so much for joining me on SABC News. That was political analyst Dr. William Mbofu from Wits University joining us for the latest developments in Zimbabwe.